Ladies and gentlemen, I greeting you. I'm Cornel Kosher, and I honored to moderate the BPO panel within Moldova Business Week 2020. As you may know, BPO is a vibrant emerging sector valued at more than $180 billion in 2019. So this vibrant sector is potentially growing and Moldova has a background and excellent infrastructure on internet, on telecom and vibrant multilingual people to offer. But also, we would like to see a more detailed overview on this, and for that, we are inviting Ms. Salina Monaku, which is an advisor on ICT and BPO on sectoral development, and Alina will reveal vibrant and emerging state of Moldova, local lead development of BPO, and more. Please stay tuned with us. Thank you, Cornel, and um, hi, everyone. I'm glad to be here. So I will try to give you a glimpse of the BPO and SSC sector in Moldova, which uh, would be the Business Process Outsourcing and Shared Service Center. So this past January, uh, in Warsaw, Poland, at the CE Business Services Awards, Kishinev, the capital of Moldova, was awarded as, with the title of Emerging City of the Year in Southeastern Europe. At the same time, companies, international companies such as Business Class, for example, an American Business Class travel company, says that their decision to, be, to, made, um, to do business in Moldova was strongly influenced by the talented people here, by the unique skill set, and also they noticed that some of the offices here look just as good as the ones in Manhattan. And a contact center, an Italian contact center, Primo Contato, has noticed that there are very advantageous operational costs, and also Moldova is very well organized in terms of infrastructure and IT. So in Moldova, this sector represents about 12% of the total outsourcing sector, except uh, IT and R&D and other outsourcing services. And while it's still a little small and emerging, it already is very diverse. It's servicing many industries such as travel, telecom, banking, insurance, IT, and logistics. Also, the operations that are being done by our people in these shared service centers range from the most simple ones such as data entry, invoicing, to very sophisticated ones such as business intelligence, product design and development, or R&D support. These are just some of the companies that are in Moldova with back offices or shared service centers at the moment, representing countries like, coming from countries such as America, Sweden, Italy, France, Belgium, uh, and so on. These companies have already discovered the advantages of doing an outsourcing operation in Moldova, and they're already benefiting from it for many years here successfully. Some of them, have also discovered the regional advantages for even further uh, cutting down of costs by opening additional offices, not only in Chisinau, but also in other areas, for example, in Baltz, in other cities in Moldova. So the question is, why, why is Chisinau the emerging city of southeastern Europe in this sector? Why are all these companies here for years and they're happy being here in Moldova? So we will just take a look of the advantages that Moldova offers and makes these companies stay, and hopefully it will interest you also in exploring the, them further. First of all, doing business in Moldova is very easy. As stated by the Doing Business Ranking, Moldova is, placed, is ranked 48 out of 190 countries, and it's ahead of Hungary, Romania, or Italy. Also, starting a business here, as it was mentioned also yesterday, is very easy and it only, only requires three procedures that can be done in one day. The strength of investor protection is in the top 40 at the, in, in, in the world, uh, comparable to Poland or other neighboring countries, such as, Belgi uh, such as Ukraine, for example. It's worth mentioning that um, not in the times of COVID, which is important when people are able to travel and visit their offices, that we're very well connected in terms of flights to all the major European cities. 
Um, you can get basically to any capital in Europe or the CIS from one to three hours. Also, we cannot talk about an outsourcing operation, a back office or a shared service center without talking about infrastructure. The ICT infrastructure in Moldova is not only advanced, but it's also very affordable. We have fiber optic coverage of over 98% in the country, and according to the gigabit ranking, we're actually the fifth in the world based on the percentage of population covered being just behind very well-developed countries, some of the most developed countries technologically, such as Singapore, South Korea, Malta, or, and Monaco. Also, in terms of uh, broadband speed, speed, we are also placed um, relatively high and uh, ahead of neighboring countries such as Belarus, Ukraine, and even Estonia. Of course, the main asset of any shared service center or outsourcing operation for any company is the human resources. We pride ourselves in talented, multilingual human resources. Also, our human resources are very um, tech-savvy, they're very open to innovation, they're very adaptable, and they have digital skin skills that, that are very high up in uh, international ranking. According to the development index, um, the Global Development Index, Moldova, is ranked 55th in the digital skills among active population ahead of Ukraine, Albania, or Hungary. The relevant group, uh, the target group of employees for potential SSCs are the young people uh, between the ages of 20 and 35, which here we have about a little over half a million young people who are highly educated, multilingual, and their employment rate is up to 50%, which means there's a lot of untapped potential still here. Also, it's interesting to note that according to an IDC report, the attrition rate of employees here in Moldova is only about 5%, which is much lower than in um, other countries, for example, neighboring us, which means that our employees are not just talented, but they're also very loyal to the companies. As we said, we have a very good technical foundation, um, educational foundation in Moldova. Most of our, our students here with higher education are specializing in business, administration, ICT, engineering. But it's, it's worth noting that in a BPO or SSC, you can um, hire basically any young motivated individual with doesn't matter what their major in university was because they can apply their skills, they can be trained in order to become an asset to the company. As mentioned already multiple times, we pride ourselves in knowing multiple languages. From a young age, our children are educated to learn at least one or two foreign languages. Most of the popular ones are obviously English and then French, German, Italian, Spanish, but we also have people studying less I guess popular languages such as Swedish, Korean, or Chinese. Also, on this map, you can see that outside of Chisinau, there's a lot of unexplored human potential available in four other cities that have universities in Moldova. We see that as the next step for companies here that are in Moldova for expansion and for further cutting out costs. Of course, we cannot talk about advantages of being in Moldova if we don't talk about um, our costs and taxes, basically, which are some of the lowest in Europe. Uh, the corporate income tax is at 12% only, which is the lowest in the region, and yesterday was much talked about, and today as well, in the IT panel, that we have a unique tax regime of 7% in the virtual IT park, which also has some eligible activities depending on what the company does specifically in the outsourcing sector. The consumer prices, which are also very important, including rent in Chisinau, are about 20% lower in Budapest than in Budapest and about 17% lower than in Bucharest or Krakow. And if we compare the salaries of, for example, a customer service agent, we can notice that it's also lower than in Kiev, Krakow, or Dublin. Here we can see that the customer service um, operators' uh, salaries range from 300 to 600 for most of the positions. Also, Chisinau is full of options for, uh, for office space, including Class A office space, which starts from 9 to 20 euros per square meter, including VAT, and the 
prices in Belt, Comrade, and Kahul, the cities that I, I showed outside of Chisinau, that are 20 to 25 percent lower. All in all, I hope that I was able to give you a glimpse of the advantages of um, the uh, locating your outsourcing, your back office, or your shared service center in Moldova. And I'm inviting um, all the interested companies to explore further um, this benefits and maybe one day to open um, a new office in Moldova and take advantage of what uh, the existing companies are doing already. Thank you. Thank you, Alina, for your thorough detailing on this overview. Uh, however, indeed, we have uh, a great potential to show here in Moldova. But what about upcoming growth potential for BPO in Moldova? What, how do you see this in terms of your institutional involvement, in terms of opportunities to come, in, in terms of uh, maybe some untapped potential? How do you see this? We actually see this um, as the sector that has one of the biggest uh, potential for development in the near future and also the potential not just uh, by creation of jobs but also keeping the youth at home by giving them jobs in international atmosphere in, in big corporations that are uh, hopefully going to set up office here. According to an IDC report, um, it is estimated that this sector is going to grow to about $30 million uh, by 2024 compared to $17 million now, uh, which means almost a doubling. Uh, however, we think that uh, based on what we see going on in Central Eastern Europe with this type of industry, we see that there's a potential, untapped potential of about $100 million and thousands of jobs, and not only um, call center jobs, but high value added jobs because Moldova is the perfect location for smaller, uh, smaller teams with uh, higher end um, operations for outsourcing. Um, at the same time, if we look at this industry in Poland or Hungary, uh, countries that already have uh, successful development in, in the BPO and uh, SSC sector, we can notice that their proportion of IT to BPO services is about 30 to 7 percent, meaning 30 percent for IT, 70 percent for mm -hmm. BPO, which means we still have a lot of room to grow until then mm -hmm. because with us it's quite the opposite. We have about most of the uh, outsourcing services with us are more for IT and not BPO or shared service centers. So we, th we see that that is the next step that we do see that in time, in, in, in a few years, um, by keeping all of our advantages and improving further, uh, we see opportunities for creating tens of thousands of jobs in this, um, in this industry and um, also reversing this mm -hmm. proportion kind of because there's an, um, higher uh, human resources availability and it's easier to convert it. It's harder to make everybody an mm -hmm. IT developer than um, you know, train somebody to work in an SSC. And just as a last comparison, for example, in Krakow in Poland, which is kind of like the heart of the shared service centers in Poland, um, they have a population of roughly 800,000 people, which is similar to Chisinau, and they have um, about 55,000 people employed in this industry, including IT. So we have the potential of at least doubling the number of jobs um, in this industry based on examples of other cities. So um, I think that's a good um, estimation. <laughs> Thank you, Alina. It seems that Moldova is, uh, uh, is following the regional trends and has a lot to, to, to offer. Thank you for the forward presentation. Thank you. Thank you. So, dear guests, now we are inviting um, Ms. Anna Kuflik, which is a strategic and international project coordinator of Viatel. And Viatel is a multi-channel center that has proved its viability, mobility, and uh, reliable relationships with its clients. And uh, Ms. Anna Kuflik will uh, represent uh, the company through the prisma of uh, their approach of new clients, of their sustainability, and their way how they think and how they see to grow off these relationships client, company, and even expanding on the regional level. Anna, you have the floor. Hello everyone and welcome. Before anything else, I would like to thank you all for joining us today, regardless of the situation worldwide. 
Excuse my nervousness, that's my first time on stage since probably fourth grade. But anyhow, I would really like to tell you about the company. I've joined about three years ago. In fact, I am a tutor, but my journey through BPO has started with Vital Company. They're our family, they're a team of experts, and, well, let me get onto it. Here are a few real-time numbers. The company has started its activity back in 2012. Then it was four people working just in the rented office. By now, we hold 120 employees that serve us as our local Republic of Moldova market, so the abroad ones. Monthly, we process over a million calls as incoming, so outgoing. Let me show you our office. That's what I see each morning, Monday through Friday. It's built according to all the necessary high-level technologies. We don't save on our staff's comfort. Since they're the ones working with the final consumer, their happiness reflects the successful results in future for our clients. There are signs all over the walls. I have a favorite one that says, the best way to predict the future is to create it. That's exactly what we do with our clients. Let me show you how we do it. Well, any business at this or another point runs onto certain issues or problems, such as sales dropping, lack of, lack of human resources, probably analytics or statistics deficiency. Well, we can solve these issues. One moment, let me catch your breath. Usually, a contact center services look something like that. People are used to see incoming calls, outgoing calls, voice or non-voice. Well, whenever a client comes to our company, they don't always know what kind of service exactly their business needs in order to improve the situation. So we, having experience in different fields with different companies, are able to research our client's market, business, and offer a, an efficient solution to resolve the issue. Let me show you how we look at a contact service basically process what we do. Business offers goods or services to consumers. Here, on the chart, in the middle, you can see a consumer. That's a family, and everything revolves around the consumer. Whenever one has a necessity, he starts to search the market. He buys, uses, and evaluates. Most importantly, he makes a decision whether to continue buying from the same supplier, to go to a competitor, or to go inactive. Well, throughout the customer life cycle, a business offering certain services or goods has tasks to perform in order to keep the client such as market analysis, developing different strategies, telemarketing, loyalty program, basically retaining the customer and keeping him happy. What a contact center can do in order to help a business, we can offer a variety of services that will help to service 
the final consumer at any point of the contact business and between the business and the consumer. We offer phone surveys that can be useful, for instance, at the market analysis stage. By calling people and asking what exactly are they looking for, we're able to build up statistic, analyze and see what is the targeted public and create lead generation, for instance. Further on, depending on finding the customer, we can arrange calling and suggesting certain goods. I personally think that whenever a business entrusts a task of working with people, with a customer, to an outsourced company, he gains time, a business gains time, to do some more important things. So, let me just move on. Our advantage is, why us? Why do we think we would be good to help you with your business? Well, as all developed contact services, we work non-stop. We also offer multilingual support, Russian, Romanian, of course, English, French, Italian, you name it. We have all the necessary technologies, and besides favorable conditions for our stuff, we also have a training center, and we do have quality department. Since we are aiming to constantly refine the services we provide to our clients. Most importantly, we love what we do. We're deeply interesting, interested in offering the best quality service, since that's our business. Consulting, performing customer service, performing sales for our clients, that's what we do. I do the best, probably. I love working at this company. Our partners will tell more about us, since these are the leading companies in their industries, as in Republic of Moldova, so in Russian Federation, in Italy, in USA. I believe that if they entrusted us, their clients, so can do you. Well, we are always just a phone call away. Would be glad to get to know you. If you need even a consultation, please contact us. We would be happy to help. And well, thank you. Stay safe. Stay positive. Thank you, Anna. Thank you for your thorough approach and for detailing uh, your company's advantage. At the same time, I would like to, 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 to ask a question that we just have received for our audience. And uh, somebody wants to know, how is your company's agility manifested? And besides, what are the costs of your services? Which is important now. Well, true. Uh, we have experience in building a project within a month that was holding 50 employees. So I believe at the present moment, we would be able to create a fully working functional project within two to four weeks. And depending on the task, the customer's request, we would say, well, four to 15 euros per person an hour. We also, we also work by the system as human performance. Mm -hmm. So depending on the performances our services have, the payment depends. 
Thank you for the question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So, uh, uh, colleagues, based on, uh, on, on our recent uh, experience, uh, more are to come, and uh, we would like to introduce Madia Doroni, which is Director of Development Aid. Uh, Madia speaks seven languages and uh, have been involved in different governmental, institutional, and also ICT projects within the sector. And uh, she will reveal the importance of, uh, of staying tuned and being connected uh, with employees, uh, uh, with customers, and in general of delivering or over-deliver uh, the services and all is related to uh, their knowledge, their vision, and their value proposition. So, Maria, the floor is yours. Thank you, Cornell, for this introduction, and let me spend some time to share about our company and our services. So Development Aid IT is a company that was founded in 2006. We have employed 200 people, and about 170 of them are based here in Moldova, but around 30 or so are from Spain, Netherlands, Cyprus, even Papua New Guinea. We are specialized in BPO and IT. The, but the main service is extended teams. And you might wonder, what is extended teams and how it operates? Let's see an example. For instance, you are looking for an additional amount of programmers or an additional number of call center operators or developers. You can't find them in your home market or they're simply unaffordable on your home market. The issue, you are looking for additional people, you can't find them. Here we are, we provide you an extended team a team that augments on top of your in-house team, that adds up on your team. It is a team that is dedicated for you, built up specifically for you here in Moldova, remotely. This team is under your control, and we take care of all the administrative issues and any questions. You have no liabilities, and you're very flexible, and it comes at an affordable price for you. So, Extended Teams is the solution for you in this case. And we have 12 teams and around 200 people that show that this works. And here are some results of the work. As an example, we built up for a client a database that unites major international players on donor-funded market. Another example is there is an app, Tenderwell, that acquisitions processes of any company by allowing data to be stored, tracked, and managed efficiently. Another example is the Rotary Club Manager. That is an application that combines all the tools any club needs to successfully connect and engage members and the wider community alike. There is an application, Bucket, we built up for a company, Eclectic IQ, and that's an application that enables uh, a room for meetings or conferences to be able to, to avoid any overlapping between them. Another result of our work and our great team is LunchAid, an application that aims to offer meal solutions for employees by providing a wide range of available takeout and delivery options in one place. So, all these products were built up for clients. Some of them, due to the non-disclosure agreement, are not to be named, but some of them, like Right Angle Global or European Management Solutions Germany or Eclectic IQ or Innerscale, these companies are really happy and even left some of the testimonials with us. So, I would like to say that Extended Teams is a solution if you are looking for highly skilled, specialized developers, any type of talent, and maybe you are looking for a way to m make your business operate efficiently. We are here to help you to create and build up an extended team for you that will be working dedicatedly for you. It is really simple. You will get an invoice a month, and there will be covered any questions that will come up. We will take care of it for you. And our partners are Moldova ID Park, 
uh, Moldovan Association of Private ICT Companies, and we are a member of ATIC. Feel free to contact us if you're looking for any solution or any option to increase your team remotely. Thank you. Th thank you, Madia. Uh, you have described quite detailed your value proposition, but what about if we are talking uh, on most suitable outsourcing partner? Uh, is development aid a suitable outsourcing partners and, uh, and how it can be applied during the pandemic, during the crisis and so on and so forth? How you cope with this kind of, of situations or issues? Thank you. Thank you, Cornel. That's a very good question. Extended teams and how development aid IT suits as the best partner in outsourcing. Well, we have a great operational team, actually a few of them, and that allows us to take a core team right away from the ones we have, and that would be the beginning of your team already. So that make, makes us faster to respond, cost-effective, affordable for you, and you will have no liabilities, no issues to worry about. And that makes us suitable. Okay, thank you, Madia. Thank you very much. Thank you for your presentation. Dear guests, now we, uh, we are greeting Mr. Olivier Prado, which is a guru, I would say, in outsourcing, entrepreneur, outsourcing expert for of more than 20 years of experience uh, on onshore, inshore, offshore markets. And uh, Mr. Olivier will present his company, GPG Consulting, from different points of view, like opportunities, their vision, their approach of clientele, and, uh, and their uh, approach on how to make all these relationships to work during the pandemic and during the crises. So, Mr. Prado, the floor is yours. Greetings. Good afternoon, uh, ladies, and, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very happy to be with you here today and to have this opportunity to share with, with you the experience that I have in Moldova for already 20 years. Uh, but let's, let me first introduce me very briefly. My name is Olivier Prado, and I am the CEO of GPG Consulting and the founder also in 2007. Uh, before that, I was a lawyer in Brussels, at the Brussels Bar, for many years before moving to Moldova, as I said, already almost 20 years ago. GPG Consulting is an offshore multilingual outsource company doing mainly contact centers business, BPO and KPO solutions. I will come back to this in a minute. But since 2007, we have served many large to small companies and mostly at the moment in Europe, meaning that we are an offshore company, a uh, nearshore company, sorry. Also, would like to come back in a minute on this notion of nearshore. So I would like to, uh, sorry, I forgot to divide uh, the solution we are proposing in three different categories. The first one is very uh, classical, contact center uh, solution, which are inbound, outbound calls. I think you already understood what we are talking about. I don't need to go to uh, in details. Multi-channel, that means not only calls, but also email, online chat, and other uh, channels. The second one, the second big category is web uh, agency service, which includes inbound uh, uh, marketing, content marketing, and mostly um, animation and moderation. Moderation of what? Of web communities, sites, forums, blogs, etc and also animation in certain cases. This represents most approximately uh, 70 FTEs. And then we have the last block of activities, which is BPO and KPO solution. I would say all the rest. Uh, all the rest is what is different things. Uh, it's it's uh, media monitoring activities, it's data, entry solutions, 
data mining, data, data cleaning, everything concerning the data. So these are the three blocks of uh, solution that we are providing. But let me share with you, because that might be very interesting for you, a little bit the opportunities and difficulties that I have met personally in uh, Moldova since I was here, because that might interest maybe people. Let's be very honest, and of course, everybody understood that the salary level is very important. Salary level not only compared to the European countries, because of course it's going to be lower, but also, and I would say mainly, to competitors. Competitors now in the BPO market are all over the world. But still, interesting things, Moldova still is interesting in terms of cost relative to this competition. Second things was extensively already explained, and I confirm that we have a very interesting and very qualitative uh, human resources. Very impressive when it comes to uh, languages. I think many people in my company speak three, four, five languages, usually extremely well. So this is also something very important in this business. And then something important, but already explained, so I don't want to go to, to, to stay too long on this uh, issue about the quality of the internet and the price, which is also very important. Uh, fourth thing, very interesting to me, is how it evolves the ease of doing business in Moldova during those last 20 years. When I arrived in 2003, I have to say that the situation was a little bit different, was more complicated. At the moment, there was almost no contact center, there was a few call center but inbound, in, inside uh, companies, but there was no call center serving the international markets, and BPO was something very, not, not very well known. The situation has dramatic cha dramatically changed, and today you have seen the, the, re the very interesting reports from Alina say, explaining how the things have been developed since then, and uh, not only from this perspective, but also from the perspective of really e the, 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 the ease of opening a company and managing it, I have to say that the situation has changed dramatically. Finally, as I promised, coming back to the nearshore destination, the nearshore notion, as you know, BPO is inshore, offshore. Of course, we do mostly offshore, although we have some clients in the country, but mostly we work, as you understood, we work for the uh, European market. And uh, nearshore means not only, as mentioned before, close to the clients. It's, it's very, very true that it's very easy to go to any destination in Europe to have people coming here to make trainings, to, uh, to ourselves send people there for internship or whatever needs to be done in the purpose of the uh, of a contract. But also, and that was not mentioned, but I would like to say a word about it, the cultural uh, proximity with Europe. This is absolutely Europe, and there is no question of being very far with people maybe having different ways of approaching things. Here we are fully in Europe, and uh, there is absolutely no cultural differences between people from Moldova and anywhere, anywhere else in Europe. So that's a very uh, important uh, question about nearshore destination. I would not be honest if I would not also mention a few difficulties in Moldova because, like, like always, things are not always perfect. And um, there are three things that I would like to mention. The first one is, of course, the lack of visibility of Moldova, especially when I came in. I would say that 99% of my compatriots in Belgium or in France, where I go very often, would not have been able to spot Moldova on the map. Today it's changing thanks to this kind of event and other events and thanks to the action of the government, which is paying attention to this. And I, every time I can, I'm very happy to contribute to this. And it's starting to be on the map, but still there's a lack of visibility uh, and, and this, uh, again, uh, is changing, but small. 
by small steps. Second thing, uh, even I, and I regret it because it was mentioned before, the Article 77 of the law, IT Park law, does not include fully uh, BPO in the scope of the IT, IT Park law. And this is something I know people are working on, and I would like to encourage to do this because in order to obtain the benefits, the full benefit of including BPO and helping it to develop, I think we, it would be very, uh, a very good thing to uh, put it in the scope of this IT Park law. And then I have a third point, which might be interesting and maybe surprising, is a little bit the lack of skilled labor force. Alina was speaking of untapped people. Maybe it's true, but those people yet at this moment are not ready. And I would say three reasons to that. The first one is, of course, the demography, which is not very in favor of Moldova. The relatively small amount of people in general, because Moldova is small. And then also the fact that, unfortunately, many people are leaving the country, which makes it even more important to develop the BPO, because not everybody can be ITO, IT, uh, IT specialist, takes a lot of time, a lot of studies, but BPO, it's much more easier. As soon as you speak a language, which is the, which is the case of many and most of the, Europe, of the uh, people here, uh, you would be able to include them in the system. So, at the moment, this is a problem which many companies struggle with, and I hope that with the resources of uh, the uh, government, we will be able to uh, find solution. Finally, to come back to GPG, and very, very shortly, uh, I would like to give you just a word of why to outsource with GPG, and I would say, Three things. First, flexibility, agility. We are a company of 150 people. We, we grew until 300 people. That makes it not a small company, but not a large company. And this means that we care for our clients. We take care of every single client very importantly. And we also are very agile to adapt to their needs. Second, quality. I don't want to say anything about quality myself, about my company, but there is one very good indicator of the quality that you provide, is the fact that the clients are staying with you many, many years, which is the case, and this is, to me, the best proof of what we, what, what we do with the quality. Third point, the cost. As I mentioned before, Moldova is still very attractive in terms of cost. Even though I like to use this notion of best shoring, which means that it's interesting to use a destination according to what it does better, best. Uh, in Moldova, for instance, and I have no time to explain this, but there are things that we do better than the other ones. And that's why we also uh, develop in other countries than Moldova, although headquarters are and will remain in Moldova. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Prado, for your detailed presentation. But we are now in pandemics. And in this situation, how do you think, what are the trends of BPO growth development, and what is the strategy of GPG to cope to these trends and pandemic? Thank you. Uh, as I see my time is running, I will be very short. Uh, saying one thing, usually time of crisis, I good for outsourcing business. It's good for BPO, it's good for ITO. So I, I think the trend will be continue to grow. This is all the studies and indicators are showing. So it will remain like this, even with the pandemic. And I think that's, that's it for today. Thank okay. you very much. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Prado, for your pitch. Thank you. Thank you. Dear audience, now we are moving to VEO Worldwide Services, represented by Mr. Alin Patru. And uh, Alin is an entrepreneur, visionary, and top travel specialist and professional. Uh, Alin is the site manager and the business development manager of VEO Moldovan office. And uh, he'll present their vision how to work in pandemic, and not only in pandemic, how to help clients to cope with these trends and how to optimize the internal processes. So, Alin, the floor is yours. Thank you.
Hello. Have you ever thought what is your only asset, your only valuable, one that you control 100%, which if you don't spend, you will certainly lose? That is time. At the world worldwide, whom I have the honor to represent today, we don't waste time. We value it. It will be my pleasure to guide you through a few steps about the work of my colleagues, many who maybe now are watching us from all over the world. In 2006, NOS had the visionary idea to expand its activities in Africa and Eastern Europe. It was also a very important year for Romania, our startup country, the place where the VO adventure started. It was a year where Romania was preparing to join the EU. For me personally, it was a beautiful year. It was my last year of university. In 2006, VO Worldwide embraced with its dynamic culture and mindset, the amazing business of clearance and the responsible economy NOS promotes in the world. What is clearance? Clearance means that we constantly search to help businesses to capitalize on their unsold stocks, past collections, short expiry products, cancelled orders. We help them become more efficient. What is our mission? We are dedicated to be the best in clearance. That's very simple, that's very brief, and that's very bold. We give our 100% and a bit more to help NOS, whom we are now part of, to become worldwide leader of the clearance market. Our vision is very simple, no waste, just value. A few things about the NOS universe. It was founded in 1976 and has become the European leader in the clearance of unsold products. We dare to say that it will be the global leader in unsold products and clearance. And that's part of our mission and that's part of our goal every day. In numbers, it's sometimes easier to express a part of the work of our colleagues and friends and partners. NOS has more than 6,000 employees. It has 312 open stores and six are to be opened by the end of this year, even now in a crisis period. NOS owns 13 logistics platforms and the total turnover in 2019 was 554 million euros. Big numbers, right? Yes, they are. And we work with them every day. Very worldwide sites. I like to make a comparison with the military area. And um, I say that our commercial sites are defensive sites, while the backbone of this healthy construction are our sites, our support sites. Kishino, the one I'm leading now, is a support site. We have sites in six countries. We have 12 offices and around 700 employees. We work in 25 international projects. And we've been doing so with pride since 14 years ago. Veo in numbers means that 6,000 employees from more than 700 societies of NOS rely every day on the dedication and great job my colleagues do. That means that every day, all these people from all these companies can focus on becoming better at their job, knowing that 
they have the support of a professional partner, of Veo. We represent now 70% of the total acquisitions of the NOS universe. 100 million euros purchased, purchased merchandise in 2019. From France, 45%. From Europe, 42%. And outside Europe, we purchased 13%. The projects of Veo are numerous. I'll go just through a few of them. You can see the full list on, uh, on your screen. We're working on accounting, treasury, payroll and HR administration, development, travel, commercial litigation and suppliers, administration, quality, sales and marketing. It's a department. These are departments. We are skilled and we're working day by day as professionals. We have also several projects inside Vero and developed by us. One of them is Dare Academy. We don't only use skills, we create skills. We choose talents, we recognize talents, and we help them be become international business-to-business -business, business commercial specialist specialists. We have recruitment days, which are competitive, so we can get from the start who is the potential candidate to become a champion in business-to-business -business trading. We like idea and innovation. We like to give the chance to all our collaborators from NOS and from VEO to promote, promote plans and performance and share good practice. In muddy times that we're crossing now, you need strong pillars for a good construction. And these are our main international, inspirational pillars. We don't waste time, we value it. We don't waste resources, we value them. We don't waste talent, we value it, as I was saying before. And we don't waste opportunities. We value all these things. Competence is one of our core values. We are passionate, we're skilled, we're prepared, and we work hard for us, for our client, for our objectives. And we're fully dedicated to our missions. We believe in continuous improvement. We learn every day. We learn from those who start with us. We learn from those who are more experienced than us. There is nobody who knows everything and who is perfect. We love engagement. We work as a team and we identify as a team. And in a team, you are as good as your weakest member. And we strive to help everybody in the team be as good as possible. And we work together every day towards that. Solidarity. We want to become champions and we need to work together to that. Transparency, we are true to ourselves. We don't hide be behind beautiful PR words. We really, really strive to be as frank and as direct in our collaboration with us, within our company, with our partners. That's the only way you can have a real assessment of the situation and take profit and value every situation as much as possible and to its real potential. Career opportunities here in uh, Kishino, Moldova. Well, we are looking for people in assistance, accounting, management, business analysis, all these. And we're growing our team every day. We're growing our team because the results of the team in Moldova are positive, they are appreciated, and they are encouraged. And this is the merit of each member of the team of the site in Kishino. Thank you. Um, I hope that presentation was not very long, not very short, but it gave you at least a good image about what we do in VEO and in NOS. And um, I'm ready for your questions.
Thank you, Mr. Petro, for your pitch. And uh, you have referred to rapidness, to agility, and to your major assets in order to improve and to provide the best practices. But for example, in case of a lockdown here in Moldova, what happens to, to the projects here? What's the situation in that case? Um, ideally, we hope we will not have a lockdown again. <laughs> but I must tell you that um, even before the situation with COVID-19 this year, VEO was already prepared for high mobility in case of, uh, let's say, the necessity to deploy the team in a very short mm -hmm. term outside of the office. Moreover, um, even if I like a lot the logo of Moldova um, and this one with uh, the idea of, of, of publicists to add a, a small Wi-Fi mm -hmm. area there is beautiful, but there's a difference between this tree of life and the way we work as a team, as a neural, let's say, network of the VEO sites. We're interconnected. So there is no project which will stay at any moment completely isolated. We have a backup for every situation. Thank you, Mr. Petro. Thank you for your pitch. Good luck. Dear guests, dear audience, our next speaker is uh, online. Uh, it's Mrs. Lilia Sinchuk Engelen, and she's business manager, CEO, and co founder of Luxali Group. And uh, Mrs. Lilia has more than 20 years of experience in attracting, assisting foreign investors here in Moldova and helping them to enter the Moldovan market. And she will uh, describe and will reveal the assets and the potential of Luxali Group in taking account the projects, being a company with Belgian capital, so foreign capital, and operating in Moldova and in the region. So uh, we are greeting Mrs. Lilia Sainchuk Engelen. Bună ziua, doamnelor și domnilor. Hi, bună ziua. Bună ziua. Um, thank you, Cornel, for the introduction. And uh, sorry that uh, the video connection will be not possible, but at the end of the presentation, we will see each other. I want uh, to use the occasion to thank uh, the entire team of Moldova Business Week and the partners for such a professional event and a great opportunity for local companies to join this promotion platform. Till now, you receive a lot of information and arguments regarding competitive advantage of Republic of Moldova. I just want to confirm that really Moldova is one of the best ecosystems for ICT and BPO sector in the region. Moldova is a hidden gem like the slogan of the event, and Luxali offer to the potential investors or partners the most flexible way to discover it. Uh, our Belgian holding, uh, Luxali Group, is present in Moldova since 1998 and active in the sectors like manufacturing, agri-food, real estate, logistic, business consultancy, ICT, and uh, BPO. Uh, following the same road as Luxali Consulting, which from the beginning was only the back office for our own investment project, and now more than 20 years is assisting investors to implement their project and to enter the market of Republic of Moldova, Luxali ICT uh, was born also to assist group members and group clients, and today uh, he is ready to diversify his activity and open to the market. He is active in the following area, ICT process flow consultancy and assistance, data processing management, web page and social media support. Uh, we are very proud uh, to be a part of success stories in Moldova of Belgian companies such uh, as Acers, the number one transport and logistic operator in Belgium, Katunasi, Segika, it's uh, one of the biggest ICT company in Benelux, Band and Deconde, Basic is uh, number one real estate developer in Belgium, uh, Accent, it's uh, one of the leading HR and recruitment company in uh, Belgium. But in the same time, we are even that we are very present in the Dutch and uh, Belgian uh, 
um, community, because we are Belgium ourselves, uh, we are very happy to assist companies from, Lux, uh, from Switzerland, from Austria, from England, from Germany, from Italy, and of course from, uh, from USA, and of course from France. Uh, why us? Um, Luxali, it's a professional platform to create your own uh, dedicated or extended ICT BPO teams in Moldova. The startup uh, can be, is done by us. If it's required, we can organize uh, an easy transition to your own entity. The total cost transparency from the beginning more than 20 years experience and a long-term vision. Luxally, it's really a one-stop uh, platform that uh, uh, permits you to find your own way uh, to start an activity in the Republic of Moldova. Till now, we have about 400 people, uh, employees that we are already placed in the company of our clients through our structure and on our platform we have about 50 uh, employees and a part of them are also ready to be uh, already transferred to the uh, to the uh, own entity of the investors due to our own investment project our team has a high degree of integrity ethics personal and professional responsibility and create personalized solution and innovative approach for each particular client. Uh, Luxali ICT MBPO and also Luxali Consulting is considered by his client uh, a reliable partner in Moldova, capable to deliver full support and assistance. We have clients that are still with us uh, 20 years, more than 20 years uh, on, on uh, ICT and BPO. We have clients that uh, uh, we already uh, transfer the teams on their own entity and we are doing uh, the payroll, uh, counting, uh, all the assistant, uh, the legal, also real estate because we have also a real estate company, uh, realist. Our mission is to share our 20 years experience and best practice and um, uh, to find your perfect way to discover uh, Moldova. It's not only in this sector that we are using uh, this practice, being the representative of the Belgian, Luxembourg, Romania, and Moldova Chamber. Uh, I am the operational executive. We assist potential investors uh, or partners also in other areas of the activities like manufacturing, logistics, by public-private uh, partnership, uh, etc. We are very happy and uh, thank you for your interest to Moldova and don't hesitate to contact us, uh, don't hesitate to discover Moldova. Thank you, Mrs. Sinchuk. Do you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Okay, thank I you. So, thank you. Thank you. So we just received a question from our audience uh, and it is like that. What would be the solution for starting a project during the pandemic period without the need for physical travel to the Republic of Moldova? Is there a kind of solution? Mrs. Sinchuk? Do you hear me? Yes, we hear uh, you. Yes, okay, thank you. The solution is uh, to contact us because now we are even working on, on, on uh, such a project to start a discussion to see what exactly uh, you want to, uh, the company want to do uh, to start their own company or to sign a collaboration agreement or to find a partner or to find a subcontractor because we have experience in all this area. And um, uh, we can even do parallel creating the entity and in the same time on our platform creating the dedicated uh, team with fully transparent and when the entity is ready we do the transfer. We are very flexible and very um, uh, one-stop or shop organized because we have our own projects and uh, it's that mentality that we want to share. Thank you, Mrs. Sinchuk. Thank you. Great. Th thank you for your pitch. Thank you. Thank you. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to ending up our BPO panel, and I hope we do discover the hidden gem in BPO based on diversity, based on potential, based on opportunities. But please stay tuned. New panel is upcoming related to electronic manufacturing and research and development, and more interesting things are to come. Thank you for your time and for your interest. Thank you. From the viewpoint of Japanese investors, uh, I think until now, Japanese investors such as Fujikura, Sumitomo, are from automotive sectors. They are producers of wire harnesses in automotive sectors and they are labor intensive industries. But from now on, I think it's very important to think about uh, skilled labor force. This is one of the expectations from Japanese side. This is very important. Thinking about the automotive or manufacturing sectors, it's naturally increased. It increased from now on too. But uh, the new tendency is about the investment, uh, is investment in IT sectors and, uh, and so on. I'd like to mention about the IT startups in Moldova. There is a huge potential, I think, with Jetro Bicores cover two countries, uh, Romania and Moldova. And Jetro's one of the biggest missions is to promote startup companies to collaborate with Japanese companies. This is one of the biggest, huge potential uh, for Moldova. From the viewpoint of Jetro Bucharest, the connection, the tight relationships between the Japanese companies in Romania is quite important for investment in Moldova too. Uh, they are uh, usually finding a good suppliers firstly, and then uh, sometimes it, it actually invests uh, here in Moldova. And the important thing is to connect two countries, because Romania is EU country and Moldova has an FTA with EU. And this is a gateway between two countries. So, firstly, we have to promote Japanese companies in Romania to invest more in Romania, and others of maybe uh, much more investment will follow here in Moldova. One of the tendency, important trend is uh, to shift to electric cars, including hybrid and so on. So some of the Japanese companies are shifting its production uh, from uh, older one to uh, that kind of new car components. And actually, the Japanese companies in Romania is changing their production. Uh, so this is a new tendency. I've already participated in the last year uh, in uh, Moldova Automotive Days in May, but I was quite surprised to see uh, such a nice, great uh, event for four days this year, uh, including several events. I should have introduced this event to Japanese companies in Romania and in Japan too. Next year, I will.